with Manchester United season being over and looking forward to the Europa League in a couple of days, we have a lot of transfer news that is going to be coming in and out of the news. So although I won't be making all of the videos about transfer news because some of it is just too unbelievable to make a video on. There are a few pieces of news that Manchester United and others have come out with that could potentially mean good things for Manchester United. Some good, some bad. Let's see what we have to talk about in this episode of Manchester United News. Let's do it. What's up everybody, it's the Aiden Sports Show. Welcome back to another video. This is going to be a Manchester United related video where we talk about the news that's been going on through social media and other aspects of Manchester United and discuss my opinions on it. Now, of course, if you guys have any different opinions of anything that I do say in this video, please comment it down below and let's start a, a conversation, man. I've had great conversations with other sports that I posted on this channel and I'd love Manchester United to be a vocal point of this channel as well and um, I would love to know what you guys think about all the news that is going to be occurring in this video but before we get started please like and subscribe to the Aiden Sports Show YouTube channel turn notifications on a huge thank you for the 75 subscriber mark um, we've been waiting for a long time to hit that mark and we finally done it and now it's time to look forward to the 80 subscriber mark only time will tell if we can get there we're very actually we're actually fairly close considering the last goal to this goal it's not not that far of a difference so we are relatively close to the goal i'd mean it would mean a lot to me if you do subscribe but enough about that let's go into the first thing i want to talk about and this is probably the most important thing in this video and the reason why i'm going to talk about this first is because due to audience retention not everybody goes to the end of the video but this point of the video a lot of people do watch and i want to talk about jesse lingard now jesse lingard has been a vocal point for a lot of manchester united fans through past present and probably the future. Now, Jesse Lingard has had a very difficult season in terms of performances in the Premier League and, and in any other league that we've competed in. Only get, getting a tally of one goal in the Premier League, we know that he's had a very difficult season and a lot of fans have flipped and flopped and have finally turned on Jesse Lingard saying that he's not good enough for the club. Well, Jesse Lingard has been fighting his own battles and the good thing about Jesse Lingard is he uses his social media for the benefit of a lot of people in a positive light. And that's what I really like to talk about Jesse Lingard. So he posted about how he struggles and how he's overcome them and how he's trying to inspire other people to overcome their problems. So in doing a review of, this, um, of his season, this is what he had to say. So the first thing he says is, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. Now, obviously, you guys know where that's from. There's no explanation for that. The reason behind... This season has been difficult for so many reasons. I lost who I was as a player and a person, but I never wanted to give up. I knew who I really was on and off the pitch and knew that having been there before, I could get there again. This meant working harder than I'd ever done before and trusting in those around me that I knew how that I knew how to best help and help me achieve that. I know fans that have been frustrated, but in all of my time and love for this club and everyone connected to it has never left me. This team, this club is my family. I'll continue to keep working harder than ever to help this team achieve its goals. Obviously, there's been a lot of positivity towards Jesse Lingard's um, post on Instagram. Now, it's, it's, it's a great post, to be honest, because he's focusing on himself. Now, Jesse Lingard has had a very rough season off the pitch as well. It's it's hard for people to remember this, but he's had very bad sicknesses within his family that has made Jesse Lingard get impacted in many ways that we probably couldn't even understand. But the, first, the, the most important thing that I like about this post, not necessarily what he's saying, of course, um, saying that he's gonna try and achieve things for Manchester United, people don't even want him to be here. That's besides the point. Whether you want Jesse Lingard to stay at Manchester United or not, is not necessarily the point of this post for me. It's, it's, it just brings a good side of mental health and how good it is to voice your opinions, voice your concerns, voice the changes that you have to go through through different circumstances in life and how sometimes it can be tough. Sometimes it's not easy. I feel like the more athletes, men, women, everybody that actually speaks about, about their issues and getting it out in the open to get support from people and also to get help 
from people as well, the better it is for the community in general. So I applaud Jesse Lingard for doing such a uh, fantastic um, deed in posting this. I'm not sure if this is necessarily the reason behind why he posted it, or maybe it's just for himself, but posting something like that brings a positive energy, positive vibes, and um, a very good motivation of change if anybody feels like they need to change, just like the way that Jesse Lingard is trying to change. So fair play for that, and that's the first piece of news that I really wanted to get into. Again, it's it's been a big issue with mental health among males, but all around mental health. It's not just about gender at this point. It's just about everything, especially during this time. We need to find ways to voice our concerns and frustrations and what we think in a way that we can be able to get help if need be. If, if there's something that's bothering us or something that is affecting us, it should be out in the open or there should be a, a, a source of communication, not necessarily social media that is available to us. And most of the time there is, but people need to take that step to go and get it and to go and find their best way of um, voicing out what they have to say. And that's the very first thing I wanted to talk about in this episode. Now, the next piece of news is about a Manchester United linked target by Aston Villa of all teams. This player is Jack Grealish. Now, Jack Grealish has been linked to Manchester United for several months. And of course, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is absolutely dying for this signing to go through. However, there's been very negative news towards Jack Grealish. And that news is that Jack Grealish has looked to price himself out of a move by Aston Villa due to them staying up in the Premier League. Now, for anybody that doesn't know, Aston Villa was very, very close to relegation, but somehow managed to survive through all adversities. And they've had a very rough season. They've managed Managed to survive and stay up in the Premier League. So that's a fit, that's congratulations to them. Fair play to Aston Villa. Now, what does this mean for Manchester United? According to the um, according to what Manchester United fans and of course outlets about Manchester United are saying, they want 75 million for Jack Grealish just for staying up. Now that price could have been dropped by 30 to 40 million significant money if they end up getting relegated. So, due to the fact that they're probably getting more money from the pre staying up in the Premier League, they are deciding to play hardball and denying Jack Grealish a potential dream move to Manchester United. So, as a Manchester United fan, Jack Grealish for me is a player that I really love. Now, if you have seen Jack Grealish over the course of the year, what not just playing um, against Manchester United, but against other teams, he has done extremely well. I believe he's won the most free kicks out of every player in, in the Premier League. He's been tackled the most. And all of these things, he's had such a fantastic season for Aston Villa. Has incredible stats. And of course... Manchester United, myself included, would absolutely love Jack Grealish. But I don't think he's the end-all be-all for Manchester United. Now, I think, of course, we are targeting Jadon Sancho, which we'll be speaking about later, so stay tuned for that. We are obviously targeting Jadon Sancho. So in that, in that way, is Jack Grealish even going to happen regardless of the price? That's the question I want to draw to you guys. Is Jack Grealish a main priority for Manchester United? To be honest, I would love Manchester United. We all talk about squad depth. We all talk about how he's a fantastic player. Is 75 million really worth it for a player that's, that was close to relegation in an Aston Villa side that did not perform very well? Yes, he had a standout season, but when he comes to a top league side and it's probably going to be on the bench, is he the right player to do that? Can we go and get a different type of player for a different cost? Maybe even get a CDM, which is something that we've been talking about for a very long time. Maybe that's the way that we go and turn instead of going for another attacking midfielder. Or maybe we just go for a cheaper option that could have the same upside, if not a better upside. In the end, Manchester United have a lot of targets that they're probably looking for, but very few of them are probably going to be linked. If and if interested in Manchester United, uh, it's very unlikely that we're going to get another signing besides Jadon Sancho. So whatever the case may be, in my opinion, Jack Grealish is a very, very far-fetched signing for Manchester United. I can definitely see it happening. Of course, I've always pictured Jack Grealish in a Man United shirt. But it looks like the move is getting much more difficult as the days go by due to Aston Villa just absolutely um, asking for nonsense prices, man. And in the end, if James Madison is worth 80 million and Jack Grealish is worth 75, we walked away from Madison. We're going to walk away from Grealish as well. If that is the true rumor that's coming out from both parties. So let's see where it goes, man. It's only, only time's going to tell. Now, finally, last but not least, let's talk about Jaden Sancho. Now, I've talked about Jaden Sancho a lot about a lot on this channel, how he's an absolute necessity. 
how different things have happened that actually require Jadon Sancho to join Manchester United. Now, the first thing we need to say is since we've made Champions League football and teams like Arsenal and Tottenham didn't, just gonna, I don't, it has nothing to do with the video, but I just wanna put that out there. Arsenal, Tottenham, you're not in the Champions League, so keep your mouth shut, yeah? I don't wanna hear none of that. When is it gonna end, Robbie? Um, in spite of that, Jadon Sancho is more likely to come to Manchester United due to Champions League football. We all know this. It's been a well-known rumor that Jadon Sancho would love to come to Manchester United, but the big stumbling block has been the Champions League. Well, now that we've got the Champions League, Jadon Sancho looks even more likely. Now, Dortmund are still asking for their 120 million asking price, which depending on euros or dollars could end up being changed depending on what you guys follow. For me, it's dollars, which means I believe it would be 120 million. Dollars. So what does that mean for Jadon Sancho's future at Manchester United if there is one? So Dortmund are trying to play hardball. That's the way that I see it. They're trying to stick to their guns and Jadon Sancho looks like he's not going to force a move. So Manchester United now have a dilemma on their hands. On one side, you think of the price, you think of the age and you think if he is worth that price with that age, by the time he's 26, 27 years old, if he keeps on this projection of his career, he's going to elevate beyond the asking price of what Manchester United paid for. However, you're spending 120 million on an 18 year old. An 18 year old that has the, I wouldn't say he's 18, I'm not sure how old he is, I'll put that up now. But a very young player, let's just say, let's just leave it at that, a young player that has the world at his feet, but could also have any any anything can happen to him he could flop in the premier league he could end up not um being the player that we think now of course people put jada sanchez the top one of the top five best players in the world definitely has that potential now we're spending 120 million on potential and players and players and pundits like rory Keane has said it very perfectly we spend money on potential now is that the way to go for manchester united me personally if it is 120 million Jadon Sancho is asking for and Dortmund are asking for, I don't see Manchester United paying 120 million. So I think this is just the first step of a long process of trying to badger and argue and scrap our way through until we get a, a price that both Dortmund and Manchester United are willing to go through. So this is not the end of the Jadon Sancho story. I, there's been good talks about Jadon Sancho. A lot of people are very hyped about Jadon Sancho. And trust me, if Jadon Sancho comes to Manchester United, we will be sure to make a video about that just as excited as everybody else. So I'm very looking forward to the future and seeing what will happen. Because Jadon Sancho, in my opinion, is probably a must for Manchester United. That right wing at the moment is occupied by a young Mason Greenwood. And of course, he's a fantastic player. He's one of the better players that we have at Manchester United. A lot of people are saying he's already better than Rashford and Martial. Each to their own, I'm not going to dispute anybody's opinions. You believe what you want to believe. But the way that I see it, I want Mason Greenwood to be an, a striker, which means that maybe, which means that Martial and, and Greenwood will probably fight for that place. And of course, Greenwood will probably start out on the bench, but there's always going to be a level of injury or some sort of circumstance that puts Greenwood starting. My concern is not to put Mason Greenwood on the bench. It's more that we need to make him a number nine because I think with the clinicalness that he has the finishing ability that he has the only way we're going to truly get the best out of mason greenwood is to play him at the number nine position as he's great as a right wing and of course we like interchangeability at manchester united so playing right wing left wing striker sometimes even cam is a is a good place for manchester united to be and mason greenwood to be but ultimately i see mason greenwood as a out and out number nine that puts the ball in the back of the net and maybe we need a, a specialist right winger to come in of a class of Jaden Sancho that we've seen, the potential of Jaden Sancho that we've seen to actually bring a level of creativity, assist, and hopefully consistency to that role. And that's all we can ask for as Manchester United fans. So what do you guys think about the news so far? So, Jesse Lingard's um, inspirational post about how he's trying to change and how he's given everything to this club. 
Jack Grealish potentially being priced out of a move to Manchester United, and Jadon Sancho more likely to come to United now due to the Champions League. However, Dortmund are still standing still on their asking price. What do you guys think of the news so far? Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe if you're new to the Aiden Sports Show YouTube channel. I'm going to do a player's review at the end of the Europa League. So the Europa League is only going to be a few weeks. So after that, I'm going to do a player's review where I go through every single player that has performed this season and give a rating from 1 to 10 based on how well they're playing. Obviously, 1 being poor and 10 being the best. So let me know what you guys think about that if you guys are interested in that video. Have a wonderful and safe day. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care and peace.